Um, look at this lovely passion vine, Maypop. There's a little buddy on it. Does anybody know what kind of caterpillar that is? He's a spiky dude. So over here, this one Cherokee purple tomato plant has been my saving grace to having tomatoes this year. Um, this plant is so healthy and productive and <laughs> all of my other ones were not that. I think I've harvested something like, probably gotten close to 20 good tomatoes off this plant. And, um, I mean, I've only, I've only gotten probably like 30 at this point of the whole garden. I've got like 40 other plants that didn't get torn out from the contaminated soil. This has actually given me a direction that I want to experiment with, with tomatoes, like doing them like this, where they aren't pruned to one liter, how I normally do. Um, obviously this takes up a lot more space, but I've gotten so much fruit from it. The plant's really healthy. However, I think the health of this plant, one, we planted a fish underneath it so it had like lots of nitrogen also it's fairly shaded um this this is only getting maybe like six or seven hours a day of like actual direct sunlight and the rest is shade and in this heat i think that's made all the difference there's a couple more there but they look like they could go a little longer i've been tagged lately in a few um posts by people asking about cracking which this isn't a great example there's just really mild cracking on this and kind of see that it's just very mild um cracking in tomatoes is caused by inconsistent watering sometimes it's just like a mildly cosmetic issue like here this tomato has just a little cracking around the top um, a couple of them are a little deeper but it healed back over and this is not going to have any damage to the fruit inside uh, sometimes you'll see like really big splits and unfortunately sometimes you get a really big split and then like ants or insects will get inside it ruins the fruit or they'll split and begin to rot um, sometimes you can have pretty deep and big splits that also heal over and the fruit is mostly edible but you might have some spaces you want to cut away it, this is one of those things that it's kind of hard because tomatoes taste better when you don't water them every day they taste better whenever you allow the sugars to kind of concentrate. Um, I like to pick my tomatoes after a couple of dry days in the middle of the afternoon when it's really hot, so you're gonna get the, the best flavor uh, because you have the most concentrated sugars. However, you're kind of setting yourself up to see a little more cracking when you do that, when you allow your plants to dry out a little bit, because essentially what causes cracking is when they've gotten a little too dry and then they get a lot of water at once. So if you let them get dry and then it rains, you're gonna have a lot of cracking. Um, some fruits are more prone to it. I have noticed that like whenever you grow yellow cherry tomatoes, they the thin skinned, a lot of times they have thinner skins and they're very prone to just splitting. And, and so you'll notice that different varieties withstand uh, kind of dry to wet a little easier. I don't actually see it as a big problem uh, because I would rather have the better flavor. But if you really wanted to eliminate that as much as possible, you know, very regular watering and not allowing your fruit to dry out very much will allow it to expand with water a little more um, or what you can do is just be aware like, so like the other day we turned the sprinkler on here and um, we picked off all the fruit that was close to ripe before watering because I didn't want it to crack uh, it is usually riper fruits that do that it's it doesn't happen as much with the the solid green ones can happen but it's less less common so you know it's not a make or break deal but if it bothers you try to water regularly or pick your fruit before you water hey Ben are you gonna go out with me and shoot a video? Yeah. Awesome. I think maybe one of my favorite things that is blooming in the gardens right now is this hibiscus. What it is, is this? It's called hibiscus. Is it a flower? Yeah, this is a flower. Isn't that so pretty? Does it smell good? Why don't you get in there and smell it and see? Uh, I don't think it's particularly good smelling, but I haven't really tried to be honest. I um, don't know. Here, let me get my coffee. I don't smell anything. You don't smell anything? Can I have a sip of that? <laughs> so this hibiscus is called Perfect Storm. It's a proven winner's hibiscus. Where I'm sitting, I can hear loud Jeremiah 
talking with Noah out of the barn and loud kids in the house, so you're gonna get it from both sides. Our family's loud. Ben, are you loud? Yeah, a little bit sometimes. Ben's shy though, right? A little shy. Drink. You're gonna go get a drink, okay. Um, so last summer, before, right before we moved to South Carolina, which by the way, yesterday, I got to South Carolina. That was a year ago yesterday, and a year ago today, Jeremiah got here with our animals. So we are celebrating our one-year anniversary here. Um, I'm thinking about going back and kind of looking at some video from then and seeing about putting something together um, that kind of shows between the two, like where we have made so much difference in this property in here. But anyway, I'm chasing a squirrel here. Um, so last summer, my friend Matthew came down to Arkansas from Ohio before I moved because he wanted to be able to come and see the original farm before we left it. We took a day trip down to the Arboretum in Dallas. We just drove down there and spent one day. Uh, drove down in the morning, drove home in the evenings. Five hour drive both ways. And it was so worth it. We went to the the botanical gardens there and I had been there previously um, I'd, I'd flown down there for a work thing uh, but I wanted to show him and while we were there they had like a proven winners test garden and I saw this hibiscus and they have several different ones like proven winners has several different hibiscus so these massive flowers are so pretty um and i know matthew has one in his garden anyway i've taken pictures of it but i really loved this one it's called perfect storm i like the dark foliage and so um i ordered some this year and it is not disappointed it's nowhere near as large as it's gonna be um once it's more established like next year it'll be probably like twice as big but it's so pretty so one thing that we've been discussing, which you guys can kind of see my view from where I'm standing. Um, we are soon going to start working on the fencing um, and fence off this other side of the pond. So Hallie, the heifer, is six months old. She's kind of getting close to the point of weaning. and. In our Devon herd that we got a lot of people miss that I'll put the video down below where we talked about bringing home our herd of Devon cows it was a couple weeks ago uh, they've been here since bless you since the end of June anyway we have two heifers in that which we don't want them to get bred by their dad which is the bull that's in with them so when they're old enough to wean we're gonna take the two heifers and Hallie and we're going to put them in a separate pasture just to keep them away from the bull. What's up, bud? So it has come to time to make a decision. I've been on the fence about what I wanted to do back on these corners. I was thinking about putting some drawer fruit trees and I think I am going to go ahead and put one on either side on the back of this greenhouse. What do you think, Will? Probably but you think the dwarf pears would be the best for the back corners here? Sure. <clears throat> like right here. Yeah, one on that side and one on this side. Yeah. I've got multiple dwarf pears from our Stark Brothers order. I've got some dwarf apples, standard plum. Yeah, I think I want to do the dwarf pears back here. So I can prune them and keep them small. And look, we're building the garden. So this is a little loud. Everybody tells me when this equipment is beeping that their dogs go crazy at the TV, so sorry, dogs. <laughs> okay. okay, so these are the raised garden beds that are going to fill this potage garden. Um, the layout that we are doing is these beds, which are 24 feet long. So we're filling the bottom of these with some compost. We've got big piles of compost and some of it's not fully broken down. But in putting it in the bottom, we're just kind of like filling up some of the space. And um, then we'll put the better soil that we have on top. And right now we have four beds in. We put this weed fabric down on the walkways. And there's going to be kind of like a pavilion here in the middle and then more long beds on that side and then some running perpendicular on this side. This whole project, this side and the other side of the greenhouse doing the potage, it's gonna take a little while. And I'm envisioning some things like some, 
really neat arbors and entrances and fences and like pergolas in the middle and all that stuff and that's gonna take a little while but right now we're just getting the beds in place like the pergolas are great <laughs> the, the arbors and all that stuff that's great for the overall finish of the garden but the most important part is being able to grow food so that's the part we're doing first so you can see there's like a lot of sticks and stuff still in here and that's fine it's just going in the bottom part these beds are 20 inches deep and when you're filling with soil that adds up really really fast so if you can fill the bottom half of your beds up even with just branches and things that are cut it's kind of like kugel culture you know by using branches and uh see as there's a lot of sticks and branches in this compost that's not broken down yet but it's really just filling the bottom and it'll continue to break down and as it breaks down all this stuff will hold water and it'll just make for the bed being healthier and really cut down on how much it costs us to fill them we'll just found a rishi i think you can use it in teas and stuff i know they're it's really more good of a for medicinal yeah it's medicinal this, that one's old though it is yeah that's cool yeah. Nice. I've been paying attention to all the mushrooms now. That Hopefully there's more where this came from. Yeah, that's cool. Hey guys, what is up? It's the next day. Um, I realized yesterday and then abruptly stopped filming that uh, I was about to be late for my dentist appointment. So, <laughs> such is life. I wanted to wrap this up and answer just a couple of questions that I think will probably pop up. Um, we, what we were filling those beds with was compost that we made here. I think I said that, but just to make it crystal clear, it wasn't fully broken down. Therefore, I wouldn't want to plant plants directly into it, um, because it would probably be pretty imbalanced at this point, not being fully broken down. However, as a fill to the bottom of the bed, um, it will continue breaking down. It will add nutrients to that soil and, um, the plants root systems aren't going to be directly in it, at least not until they get really deep, in which case it would be fine. Um, on top of that, we used purchased compost. Now, if you've been tracking with us this year, we did get some damaged compost that had herbicide uh, contamination in it. That's what we've been dealing with, with in our high tunnel. Uh, we also had, after that, found another supplier for compost um, that we had purchased a good deal of and put on part of the outside garden and we have grown things in that and they've been completely fine and productive uh, beans are kind of like the canary in the mine on this whole amino pyrrolid herbicide issue because nightshades are susceptible to it and a lot of mine were stunted and had to be pulled out but beans are very very sensitive so anything the legume family so the beans that I actually planted in that contaminated soil completely died so um, by growing beans in a soil it kind of will give you a really clear view and they sprout really fast so if you're getting some bought soil in and you're wanting to make sure that it is clear of herbicide before you put it on doing a little test sprout and growing a couple of beans in it they'll sprout within a week and within another week you'll know for sure uh, whether they're doing okay or not and so I've I, the compost that we are filling those beds with we have already checked that and we've used it in part to know that it's not contaminated I always get asked questions when it comes to raised bed gardening buying soil bringing it in and people are like, why are you doing that? Why don't you just garden with the ground that you have? And while we are doing that, we are doing in-ground gardening. Um, it's going well. We're harvesting food. It's good. Um, I, I like to do a variety of things. And truly, the reason why I am doing raised bed gardening is just because I like it. And that's okay. Like, I don't know why in the permaculture world, in the gardening world, in the homesteading world, there's almost this like attack thing that happens whenever people are like, that's not the most effective or that's not, that doesn't make the most financial sense or this, that, and the other. Like, I just like it. Like, what do you do? You know, do you get your nails done? Like, I mean, there are things that people do just because they like to. It might not be the most effective. It might not be the most efficient, but they just like to. And I just like raised bed gardening. I do think that it is very beneficial and makes gardening very accessible for a lot of people. The amount of people that I speak to who ha have limitations on their physical capacity that have been able to garden because of raised beds or other styles of gardening rather than just in the ground. It's, just, it's extraordinary. The people that I see that are in wheelchairs and that are gardening in, you know, waist level raised beds or in buckets that are on tables and different things like that. If it allows people to garden and makes it accessible, I will not condemn it. And I just like raised bed gardening. I'm an artist. I love line. I love structure. I love being able to create something 
and beautiful. And that's what the raised bed garden is for me. And so, yes, I suppose we could go dig soil somewhere else on our farm and put it in there and all that stuff. Uh, but purchasing compost, that's just the reality for a lot of people. And while, yes, I do want the goal to be... Um, creating our own inputs. I'm really uh, about to take a real deep dive into vermicomposting worm farming with my friend Natalie over at uh, Hey It's a Good Life is her channel. Um, that's something that we are on the brink of. We're working. We've been working on compost all year, um, working on creating our own inputs and then working on scaling those to teach people how to do those on a small scale in yards. Because guys, if, if you live on a 16th of an acre, you don't have a place on your property to go dig up soil to fill your beds. Like a lot of people are in the position to have to buy compost. And so um, it's okay. That's completely okay. And raised bed gardening is completely okay and valid. Um, and I'm super happy with how this is going. And so, yeah, so, you know, we filled the bottom half of our beds with compost because we had it. Uh, you can use logs, you can use branches, you can fill the bottom up with leaves, uh, different things that are going to break down and put that 10 inch cap of soil on top of that, um, that the plants are actually going to grow in soil that you have tested and confirmed just even by just growing beans in. It doesn't have to be like a, um, a drawn out thing. A lot of these things aren't even showing up on actual lab tests but it shows when you grow a bean in and it dies that there's something going on with it um, and then you're you're good to go and that can save you a lot of money by not having to fill the whole thing with soil and also by not wasting plants and seeds by growing it or attempting to grow it in soil that's contaminated so yeah that's that I, I just those questions often come up and that's okay. Like, I, I love questions being asked. I want to be a place that people can ask questions. But I also want to make sure that, like, it's established that it's okay if you have to buy soil. Like, I, I, I hate the fact that we are having to deal with this whole contamination issue and this whole issue with it being difficult to just go out and buy what you need to grow your garden well. Um, but that's the reality right now. That's something we're having to deal with. I have hope that we won't always have to deal with that. I have hope that at some point, you know, maybe there won't be prevalent poison <laughs> making its way into our gardens. Um, surely that can be addressed in our lifetime. But uh, as it is right now, that is an issue. So I just want to teach people how to get around it because I hope that everybody is gardening. I hope that people in wheelchairs are able to garden. I hope that people in one sixteenth of an acre backyards are able to garden. Um, growing a big and productive garden should not be exclusive to people who live on a farm. That's not the answer. Like, yes, people who are living on farms and growing food is definitely part of the answer, but until we get to the point that just the regular person that's living in a regular house in a regular subdivision and dealing with regular limitations that people have to deal with, um, it, they have to be able to grow food too. And so that's, that's why we're, we're building um, also such an array of different ways to garden because I want people in all different positions to be able to look at my garden and find a garden gate that they can relate to and go through that they can say, you know, I could really see myself doing that. Uh, plus, I just, I love a raised bed garden. I just, I, I love it. It moves my heart. It's beautiful. It's artistic. And I would love to grow something lovely. So, thank you guys for hanging out with me yesterday and today. <laughs> and for the process of us building this lovely garden. I am very, very excited to do that. God bless you guys. Until next time.